Recently, there's been tons of chatter throughout the hockey world involving some big potential names that could very well be heading elsewhere upon either trades or signing new deals upon free agency. Therefore, I thought it'd be fun to take you all along for the ride as we go over a handful of players that could very well be representing new teams upon the start of the next season. And with that, here are five NHL players that will probably be on new teams for the start of the 2021-2022 campaign. Following the end of the Carolina Hurricanes season, the team has given defenseman Dougie Hamilton the go-ahead and clearance to talk to other teams that are interested in his services. And according to NHL insider Elliot Friedman, several teams have already inquired about Hamilton and what it would cost for his signing rights. Therefore, if Hamilton can find an offer from a team that offers more than what the Hurricanes are elsewhere, then we could very well witness number 19 donning some new team colors before the start of the next season. Hamilton, who recorded 42 points in 55 games played last season, would give any team an offensive boost from the back end. At 6'6", his long reach paired with being a right shot defenseman make Hamilton a prime target for teams looking to upgrade and bolster their blue line. Considering the cap and where it is, and the value that Hamilton would bring to any potential team, it's very possible that he could try and command a similar contract as Alex Petrangelo was granted by the Vegas Golden Knights last season. But if Hamilton was given the opportunity to play for his hometown team in the Toronto Maple Leafs, he might be willing to take a pay cut to do so. But even if Hamilton did lowball a little and say take 7.5 or 8 million for a bridge deal or something, Dubas would still have to go to work and clear some space in order to secure another Toronto homecoming. Obviously, I think most of us can agree that Toronto is and has been in desperate need of a top caliber defenseman, and especially one with the right shot and the top pairing for that matter. If Dubas and Hamilton's representation can come to a fair agreement, the signing would make sense in my opinion. Another bombshell that was recently dropped on air was that longtime flame Matthew Kachuk wants to move on from the team that once drafted him. And really, when you look at the uncertainty surrounding the Flames after a disappointing end to their season, it's not hard to understand why Kachuk might want to move on. The forward, who has $9 million left coming to him for next season, is nearing the end of his three-year $21 million extension he once signed with Calgary. With that being said, despite the fact that number 19 was on a struggling club last season, he was still able to be effective as he finished with 43 points in 56 games played. Kachuk brings a known bite to his game along with a high compete level and an intense Intense net front presence. And as most of us know, Kachuk has been an integral part of his team for a hot minute due to the emotion and drive that he brings to the ice game after game. The team that sticks out to me the most that Kachuk could end up on is his hometown team in the St. Louis Blues. Not only did he grow up in STL, but as most of us know, his father Keith played for them as well. The Blues also play a very physical game, tend to wear down opposing teams with their physicality and size. Therefore, I can see Chucky fitting in nicely on the first line with Ryan O'Reilly. The Blues do have several contracts coming off the books this offseason and theoretically can make it work. With names like Hoffman and Bozak most likely not re-upping and several first round picks in their pocket to work with, if Doug Armstrong wanted to make it happen, Matthew could very well carry on the legacy in the show-me state that his father once started. Last week, we talked about the possibility of Seth Jones, who will be another prime defensive target, up for grabs, suiting up for Philly potentially. While that's definitely one logical place that he could end up with, another is Edmonton Oilers. As the Oilers, who also had a disappointing end to their season after being swept by Winnipeg, are going to be looking to make some changes this offseason, with Tyson Berry potentially walking in free agency, taking on the Jones contract that only has $5.4 million left to pay out, wouldn't it be much of a difference financially for next season. And in my opinion, Jones would be a definite upgrade from Berry. He's younger, has a knack for eating up minutes with ease, and has a much longer reach, and would be perfect for the power play as well. Having him up on the first pairing with Darnell Nurse would definitely make for a tough tandem for stars to go up against. Even if they wouldn't be able to afford him after next season, adding in a top tier defenseman such as Jones would ultimately give Edmonton some needed structure and size on the back end that's imperative for the postseason. During his season exit interview, Ron Hextall indicated that he was standing behind Tristan Jari following his postseason performance, as he said, quote, I don't think we would have been where we were without Tristan, and we all have to remember that Tristan is a young player. 
He's going to learn from this, and he's going to come back better in September, he says. Therefore, for the Penguins, while Jari is gaining more experience and learning between the pipes of the responsibilities of a number one netminder, it definitely couldn't hurt to bring in a more experienced veteran who could help lighten the load and show up in the big moments when needed. Despite the fact that Hextall won't have lots of cap space to work with in theory, there are some cheaper options that he could take a look at. Linus Almark and Jonathan Bernier definitely stand out as affordable yet reliable options in order to allow for more flexibility in that. Out of the two personally, I can see Bernier fitting into the role better due to his age and experience not only as an NHL starter, but also in the postseason. And really considering the fact that he was playing for the Red Wings last season and was still able to walk away with a .914 save percentage and below with three goals against average, definitely is an indicator that he could efficiently carry some of the workload in the Berg. At 32 years of age, as a pending UFA, Bernier is coming off of a one-year $2.5 million contract and therefore wouldn't be too costly to bring in as a solid backup for number 35 next season. Similarly to Kachuk, Sean Monaghan is on a team that's going to be doing more than its fair share of soul searching this offseason, which is code for <laughs> Brad True Living is going to be one of the busiest GMs as he looks to rectify the situation and potentially save his job. With that being said, one of his biggest bargaining chips he currently has at his disposal is former sixth overall pick Sean Monaghan. As the team, according to multiple sources, has already been listening in on multiple offers for the forward services. Monaghan, who saw himself demoted from the first line, ended up centering the second one for the majority of last season, before being sidelined due to injury. But even still, it doesn't take away from his natural knack for tickling the twine, as number 23, impressively, was the second player out of his entire draft class of 2013 to reach the 200 goal plateau behind Nathan McKinnon. Monaghan would fit in nicely on a team that's looking for a first line center that could afford adding at least six million to its books for the next couple seasons. One team that definitely makes sense to me is the Ottawa Senators, as the team definitely has a brighter future than most, with names such as Brady Kachuk, Tim Stutzla, and Josh Norris at its disposal. Monaghan, who's 26 and still in his prime, would give the team more needed experience and fit in nicely on the penalty kill. The pesky Sens also have a slew of first-round picks to offer to potentially sweeten the deal. 